Please listen to the Dharma with the motivation of excellent bodhicitta uh, and uh, motivation yeah, of bodhicitta. Thank <laughs> Right now we are in the context of uh, the essence of the path and how the basis is to be taken into practice. Dalni, Dini Sunjuku Kuni, Nyam Sulem Patella, Matulvi Shisigres, Deshubare. And the other day we spoke about the unmistaken basis as the um, unity of the two truth which is to be practiced, which is to be taken into practice, that is free from the two extremes. Ta kapsumbabe manzu takche se ayati tini ta bitta tang che bitta se ayati nyam lin che yong tuk zogu di Chetamche Kwanashi and to summarize what we have been talking about in this context so far is that we were talking about the freedom of the two extremes, the two extremes of eternalism and nihilism. And the main practice is 
to be free of these two extremes. Now, what does do these two extremes refer to? First of all, the extreme of eternalism or permanence is referring to the idea that all phenomena do really fully exist in the way that they appear, so that they actually um, exist, really exist in the way that they appear. That's the extreme of eternalism. And the uh, extreme of nihilism is to think that phenomena, all phenomena, do not exist at all. So none of the phenomena do exist uh, at all, completely non-existent. And so when we are beyond or go beyond any of these assumptions that things really exist or things do absolutely non-exist, then that is what we are referring to as the freedom from the two extremes. And this is in short what we were talking about last time. Tadi kau sudah hmm, hmm, masuk dalam begi, kau tang tinju, kau kau tu tinju, ni tena ni, eh, juta susu ki, lam nyam selain berkap sudah, tajem mampu je, tang yur eh, kerja senanda tena ngasu. ตาวัดเนี่ยนะพี่เขาว่าตาวัดที่อยากกูจะมาจุงนะทีนี้คนบัดที่อยากกูยังกันไม่ไปดูแต่เป็นน่ะถ้าจิตดีอย่าปัด
An important point in this context is that we actually need to analyze a lot in order to ascertain the view. And when we consider the different philosophical systems or tenant systems um, of the Buddhist philosophical schools, then uh, there are different stages to reach the freedom from the two of, there are different stages of understanding of what the two extremes are and different stages in that analysis that they constitute. So uh, it is extremely important to first ascertain, understand the view very well. If the view is not understood well, then what can we meditate upon? How can, how can our meditation become good too? So when we speak about the freedom from the extremes of existence and non-existence, or the freedom from the extremes of eternalism and nihilism, then the understanding of what exactly that is referring to is not the same in all philosoph philosophical schools. And there are many stages we need to consider. When we just hear it's neither existent nor non-existent, that sounds very black and white, right? But that's not really what it is referring to. And so when we say it doesn't exist, uh, it does not exist and it does not non-exist, phenomena do not exist and not non-exist, then in this context, Tsongkhapa points out that first of all, we need to identify what we're actually refuting here, what we're actually saying um, that does, does not exist. And without that, we cannot come to know the view correctly and then we cannot meditate on an, the understood um, meaning of the freedom of the two extremes. So it is extremely important on the, in, the, in Madhyamaka to first identify and recognize what we're actually refuting. And in short, this means to identify what the extents or limits of existence and non-existence actually are. So it means to understand correctly when a certain limit is reached with what we mean with existence or a certain limit is reached with what we mean that, it, that something does not exist. And whenever we go beyond that limit, that is to fall into the extreme of existence or the extreme of non-existence. So when we go beyond the limit of um, existence, like the, 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 when we go beyond a certain limit of what existence and non-existence refer to, then that is what we mean with falling into the extreme of existence and non-existence. So when we talk about this, we are not referring only to whatever we perceive, whatever we can touch with our hands, um, but an idea of an extreme, like of an, a limit that we go, be, if we go beyond that limit of holding onto the existence or non-existence, then we are actually in the extreme of, ex falling into the extreme uh, view of existence and non-existence. And um, we really need to think very carefully about the essence of that and the limit that I'm referring to here, the extent that is implied here. And in that process, there are actually many stages. Um, so there are many uh, yeah, stages of analysis to in this understanding. Tandi yemi ki chedi kawala shaku gire sedi. Um, chidanga juni tanji shuba nashi. Mas namba sanji ki chedi nyam se leyondi. Tupta soso kapsu ki lam jirimba tanchani. Nyam so. Um, 
连国个连国个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连书个人连
别去打嘛，是不得不去。然后呢，王波，呃，接触不得不去，听这个讲啥子吧，因为呢，王波不得不去。So when the， 嗯，这呢，然后呃，外面的这呢，这边跟他他们这，呃，接触多，搞不搞当点子。Susu lola cambatang sabadaw dindigi chona pento chaya dao yung sikare dindigi susu wangbud la kare di pento chaya yung gudu ni din na xin chino to xa bai na tatari gudua ma to ta chik du uma pa tombo re che zan yin jin min chi uma pa di rangay nyam su lingu kare si yin su dao kata ya chi chita ma wa dao chen na ko mien pa re ni shida shida Pintu yang sama re, cuci yang sama re, so betul deh, sama tanya yang sama re. So if you just consider the two different presentations of the two truths of the Madhyamaka and the Chitta Matrins, then one really needs to consider one's own inclinations and capabilities in applying it to one's own situation. And if one is someone of the capacity of following a more gradual path, gradual approach, then it um, is possible that the Chitta Matra presentation of the true truths is more applicable, that one can understand that easier and that one benefits from that presentation uh, more, while the Madhyamaka presentation is probably less um, accessible for one. While if one is of the, um, uh, has a very high capacity and is of the kind of person that is suitable for um, a sudden approach, um, then the Madhyamaka teachings and the Madhyamaka presentations are probably applicable and one can uh, straight away access those. Um, the point is that one should rely on whatever helps oneself most, whatever is most beneficial in one's practice. It, one shouldn't follow the Madhyamaka's uh, teachings just because they are considered higher teachings and think and leave the Chitta Matra teachings aside uh, just because they're lower or something like that. It really, whatever is most beneficial, that should be taken up. Mm. ตาข้าสังกัดจูจิกดีตินีตินีสุ่งจูเสกเจดีเชื่อว่าเรตินีอืมตาเดี๋ยวบ้านนี้เสดีก็เดี๋ยวบ้านนะเชื่อทำเจ
and whatever appears to ordinary beings, that is the relative truth. Um, and that we consider things to exist in that way, to be true in the way that they appear, right? As ordinary beings, we consider them to be the way that they appear. But are they really that way? Do Is the abiding way really this... Um, uh, do they really abide in the way that they appear to us? No. The abiding way is the truth that is being seen by noble beings then. So what noble beings perceive is the ultimate truth and what ordin and ordinary sentient beings cannot perceive uh, that ultimate truth in that way. So just to summarize it again very briefly, we have a way that things appear to ordinary beings and we have a way that they abide uh, their true nature. And the way that things appear to ordinary beings, that is the relative truth, and the way that they truly are, what is being perceived by the noble beings, that is the ultimate truth. And that is just a very simplified way of looking at it, that uh, which we can use as a basis for our understanding here. Of course, when we go into detail about the philosophical systems and schools, then there are many definitions and there's a lot of detail and nuance to the explanations. But for now, um, this understanding will suffice. So considering the two truths um, and how the, the presentation of the two truths applies uh, to ourselves, we can consider that whatever we experience right now, whatever appears to me right now is only the relative truth and not the ultimate truth. That's how we can con conceive of it or be thinking here. ดินาวัตติเอ่อยุลขวางกิเตมบะกะรีอิมบะติงาราญซุละซุชะชะบะมะอิมบะเจงาราญซุเซมกิเตงโดลาตะเตนาวัตติเนเชะรทุเบก
causes and conditions, our visual tendencies and so forth, they allow us to perceive uh, something in a certain way. So it's not that the object would actually be existent tr and true in the way that appears and give us that appearance, but it's um, the confused mind that imputes and creates um, the idea of the object to exist in that way that it appears. Tadi, kunjup se di sini, kejujur kau ingkari dengan itu. Tadi contoh ada budi, gombal tu tu dah, tawa tawa kau ni begi. ดิเชนนั่นดีแต่ตุนตาการสูงอะไรสินะคุณจบเสกสิ่งที่ดอร์ดีนะเอ่อที่มุกรังชินดิบจิตคุณจบเทสต์ดิสูงอะไรแต่
Uh, these are not two distinct things. Tadi ngaran so ke nam kyun nang na tong chok ke mare tong na nang chok ke mare se me pasha shu chung ba shu ro ba and di pasha di kyu ta a kali ka ko chung ko ro tadi ani kha sang a pe cha tin jun nang la ya ta a nang dong sung chu ki pe di chi dang mang ba yo re and gyu ma ta mi lam ta te dan de shi ta di ni ngan zu le la bu da wo di ta ti de ba ma re s na na to me cho wa na to na na me cho ba di a pe na ma ran su mi lam ki a nyam su nyo wa tin su a ta ji du de ba re s ne ya la tu gu mi du wa de ni ta ji du me ba re s ne ya la tu gu mi du wa de de yin du de ni a me shi du nang chu ge re nang shi du Tempat madu begini juga, di kalgi maris saya di mana susu susu itu ada milam nanti itu sama tambah ini, tahu tu sih ni sih kita beres ni, tadi kan tu kasang dia yang suin bah dia ni kasih dia tinggal tu. We have very strong tendencies, habitual tendencies, to believe. That things that appear cannot be empty, and whatever is empty cannot appear. That's really、um, like that kind of idea. It comes from very strong and habitual tendencies that we have, and we have been looking at some of the examples that are used in the different texts to explain. The unity of appearance and emptiness, and that things can be empty while they appear, and they can be appearing while they,、uh, they can be empty while they appear, and they can appear while they're empty. And the examples that we have seen were those of illusions and dreams. And when we just look at the examples of tree,、uh, dreams, it's actually very easy to understand what we mean.、Um, Dreams are not really, really true, right? That don't、uh, the things we experience in the dreams do not、um, really exist in that way.、Um, but we can also not pretend that, that dreams, dream appearances, do not take place. That we don't experience things in our dreams, right? So、uh, whatever we experience in our dreams. It's not really existent, but it's also we cannot negate that the experience of the things in the dreams, and so we can see that actually to experience something while it's not really there is not a contradiction. It's not a problem, and so if we contemplate the example and the dream experience、uh, a bit, then we can develop certainty. In the fact that things can be empty while they appear, and they can be appearing while they're empty. Ta, um, na wa tang tong ba se di ke je de shi yong du, um, ta ngan zu, um, la ka le ka bu ji ka le yo re shi nan ta. Nawa se di ta meba kune se tu se mare ko kadu ini yang tu ni share dek itu ba ta desong tu yang tu ni ta yang na nawa korang meba se ku ku se re yang na ni nawa se di kune meba ju se tu se mare sam sam dawo tu ni cunang ju maju se sam dah lihir nawa tongpa ke se ku ku se nawa kau nawa kau tu se mare sam sam dawo ju ta Tni nawati ta ka gugu redam gugu mare sen ngazu gom nyamin cebe kasula. Tni ngazu nyawa le cai yong tu. Tni dekor langong ke gom cint tin suki ceba mangun nani tudu mangun nai re gom jebe kasul. Nawa ka gugu redam mare ka tu gugu redam mare sehatla. A very difficult point for us 
is this talk about the unity of appearance and emptiness because we always consider that um, we either really can't eliminate appearances they keep showing up they keep appearing right um but do do we somehow need to eliminate them can we eliminate them um as they're always appearing um or uh, what's what's the deal with these appearances right um we can't really stop their like we, we might have this idea that we really need to stop appearances, that they they need to be uh, extinguished, um, or we might have the idea that it's really not possible to uh, stop negate appearances at all, and so in when we apply this again to meditation practice, then we need to consider. Um, what, um, whether we can or can't stop appearances or whether or not we need to do such a thing. And the great meditators, the accomplished practitioners, they have considered this topic of uh, the appearances and the stopping, the negating, the uh, bringing to an end or not of appearances in much detail. ตาดีเดคาเชกิกมจับตุอ่านาวะติกะนิกมกุเกเรสนิตินเดยังจุมบะเรตินิยังคาเชกิตินิ So there are some who uh, believe that appearances actually need to be stopped in meditation, that they need to be brought to an end. And there are others who uh, consider that appearances are actually not something that can be negated, that can be completely stopped, and that meditation is um, uh, based on uh, the acknowledgement of appearance. ตาอ่าติกัปซูลาอืมจิตังงันซูมังเจวายงดาดาวติตานาวะติกะทุกุมาเรลาอะนี่อ่าก้มจับติกัปซูลาอ่าGenerally, or in most cases, um, we acknowledge that, or most people in many systems acknowledge that um, that appearances can actually not be stopped, and they don't need to be stopped, and that uh, we, yeah, with we do not need to just stop appearances, and that is also the approach that is being followed in the teachings of the Mahamudra and the Dzogchen teachings. Um, ซาติกัปซูลาเกจุมปูจิดิการิสุนเอเรสนาเปนาอืมชาเจนกัปซูลาตินีอืมนังวาเซจิตังชิมบาเซจิงาจูนัมโตเซยองดิริมบาติน
，一万七千块。嗯，第二，嗯，能怎么能先把实力啊？不来了，那当不那我等先把第一万七过渡啊。So how do we need to consider this when we apply it to meditation practice again? Uh, we actually need to consider that there is a whole process that goes on uh, when appearances take place, appear. And in the Mahamudra, we actually speak about appearance of the, the stage of appearance and then that of roughly attraction or attachment um, so there are two different stages now this is um, difficult to translate because uh, we don't have that as a like the fully developed vocabulary in that context uh, there are many different stages in which we or yeah different stages in the development of what we um, actually experience as conceptual thoughts there are more subtle and more coarse aspects in that development um, and this is very difficult to actually express the subtlety of the process and so um, in order to come to what we <laughs> understand of as a coarse conceptual thought actually there are many stages that lead up to it and um, that's a little bit uh, difficult to express now the first point is there are two stages which I'll roughly translate as appearance and uh, attachment. The um, now I said you this tower, eh? Then you should pass it to Rapa Rawa. Then you, uh, Nang Sambo said, Molly, you were. Take it just to let me shimba say, Lodi Kim Mutuba. Teach it to Maransu Muni Nuke Hinjura, Mazula Nuke Hinju. The shy cage you can, Shidan cage you can, same two you can, play second chas on the Nawatan, Shimba Nikin, Dichi Vinani, Nawaki, Shirashi the Chigi of Mare, Mang Cheva Digi, Maransuta, Zavi Nyamamata, Nivi Nyamambasin, Kunjung Dembasegrova. So when we consider these two stages, um, the first one, appearance, is more subtle. And a mind that then conceptually gets attracted or attached to the object um, that is a more coarse um, part or aspect of this experience. Um, so it is a conceptual process that I'm describing here with this, uh, with the mind that gets attached or gets starts grasping to the object. Um, and that is more the basis for the coarse afflictive emotions then to arise too. So when we speak about the development of uh, desire, attachment, of aversion, anger, or of ignorance, that is really more based on this more coarse aspect of uh, attachment to the object, not the appearance, the more subtle experience of appearance itself. Um, so it's the conceptual mind that grasps to the object um, that gets attached to the appearance um, that develops the root and subsidiary afflictive emotions that we describe in the context of the truth of origination.
嗯，哎，那呀，给那娃当先把点做，嗯，给人把点靠，你不修几把人做，俺做错多米多啊，俺那做错来的蛮些白的呢，哎，先把点让做个。The process that has taken place from appearance to the mind getting attached to the appearance, starting to grasp the appearance, is actually really fast. And so um, it's re really the second part that we um, think we experience rather than the first one because it's so fast. <laughs> And when we consider these two stages again, appearance in itself, like the, the part of the appearance itself, that actually does not include so much grasping to true existence. Um, that's not so strong at that stage. Really, when uh, in, the, in the second stage of the mind being attached to uh, the object, grasping to the object, that's when we're really grasping to the thing to be truly existent. <laughs> Um from start to the finished product chachabadula. Actually, the development of a single thought needs a lot of stages, a lot of things that are precursors for it. Uh, there are many stages that lead up to the actual experience. Just like when we paint a painting, for example, then we need to have a base color first and then we add the details and we add more colors and colors and colors to it. Um, so there's a whole process that takes place for the development of the final product, the final picture. The same when we have a statue, uh, when we make a statue or something, then uh, there's a whole process that we go through from having the um, inner mold and then the outer layers that need to be added and then uh, the, um, the detailed uh, carvings and the coloring and the finishing. Uh, so there's an entire process that takes place um, that goes into the final product, the final result. And so the same is true for our experiences and our uh, conceptual thoughts, uh, whether we're talking about the, exp the uh, conscious experience of something pleasant or unpleasant or any kind of thought, um, we might consider only the end product. We only experience, like consciously, we only see this end product. Uh, but there are many stages that lead up to that final product. Penang <laughs> 
ตั้งเงี้ยตั้งยี่เปชิบะนาชินตั้งยี่งานซุกุจิเซบะเนทาวะนี่จินยาราปะอันนี้ฟินิชปะรอกละชาโรบะตินาชินจินเตนเดกิน
and spe specifically we need to consider uh, the attachment part because that is what actually harms us that is what actually creates our confusion and what makes us uh, become attached to things with desires of, of things and so on and this is specifically emphasized in the Mahamudra teachings um, for example Tilupa instructed Naropa in this sense right when he said that uh, son Appearances don't bind you. Attachment binds you. Cut through attachment, not over. Tanda, um, they got to learn. Shemba said, teach to her. Did she dang? Um, let us shemba down. Chapa said, you must do. Sidi we're using here the term attachment and that's very close to the other term that we sometimes is also um, ca called attachment in English <laughs> um, so uh, or yeah, this grasping um, attachment as an afflictive emotion. So it's important to distinguish them in this context here, though. Uh, the attachment I'm referring to in comparison to appearance is a little bit different than the afflictive emotions of uh, attachment um, because it rather refers to the way that we relate to the appearance with a grasping to its existence, to its true existence. So when someone says something, we believe that that is really it, that is really uh, true, or that an experience of happiness or of suffering is true, is real. So the underlying idea with this attachment here yeah, is that there is an underlying grasping to its, um, what it, that is referring to an um, underlying apprehension of it to be true, to be real. That they got to learn how to thought process to the kind of young person and go to the channel. Now what you share young girl, right? Any Dijela Shemba Jungor Shemba Shubatan Dijela Karyungarsina Retoki Yungor Any Retoki Valatini Chatanki Yungor Any Dini story doomed out the Kotsu Yungova Namdogi doomed it. So how is this thought process actually happening? First, something appears, an appearance rises, and then we get attached to it. We engage with that object with an underlying grasping to its true existence. And on that basis, we develop hopes and fears with regard to that object that appears. And Based on hopes and fears, we develop um, uh, desire, attachment, and uh, aversion um, to that uh, appearance. And that's how the whole story starts, right? That's when the whole thought process, the whole story that we create in our heads, initiates. <laughs> Mm 
community manchila retox says no nam to kiji shion di retox se ki diungu da ta nyokta sokin chasang di retox se di sobare se reto ti ti ni kawani chungu tu se di shemba se ni chungu tu wa di yundi ta shemba mena reto yungu mare ani reto di shemba le ti ni chungu ye basonza ani tanda dilopa ki nawe mi ching shembe ching se de ching dang da ti ti ni chila sunga In short, when we consider the issues we're facing in meditation, again, um, it's our hopes and fears, right? The hopes and fears are the, uh, the actual troublemaker. And they come about only due to this underlying attachment. Without this attachment, they won't be hopes and fears without this underlying grasping uh, to the appearances um, there won't be hopes and fears and that's why Tilopa describes in the, the famous quote that we've just heard uh, that uh, the process of binding us to samsara the process of binding us is based on the attachment not the appearance it's attachment that needs to be cut. The Shimba Yumeki Reto Kandis Kigre Marisa, the Mazupeta was a Apena Milam Jerwa Milam. The Imase Bardola Maranzula Reto Shumbu Jungure, the Nanshinki Laga Chigure, the Duere, Chasan Chipa Chicken Tangazu need the Sesave Jella Yato Sik Nilam Nangla Karichasons in the Samotayondi Digging Maranzuki, Dilla Nilamki Nekabki, Tanilla, Sanginla, Reto Ligmare, Halam Ligmare. Now, what the chicken re cabayo mare? Yimba in a young, ni cook debe capsula, de capsuki, shimbadi, shook chimpojere, caressena, co nidangi shimba, ni cook debe capsula, one in some bit zimbat shurwa, jeta, redo shook chimboshi wishing good. That need is set up a jella. Now, what did Chiba in by in a young? Mazu do some town to Karejini, Redo Kigio Marisina. A daddy Nilam race, Demba Maris, dig some of the Mazu Yetever. How could ever? The Nitangi Shimba Demba Maris said, Shimba Sugar Marie. Shimba Sugar Meba Sonsa, Nilam Nangi, Suda de Rotang, Yul Daniela, and Mazu needs a gel, needs a gel. Chatanki, Chatanda, Redo Kigio, Tinduda, a co Nawala, Nangmana, like Kabar Menayang, Shimba, Yota Mel Sadiki, and Redo Kimaji Sadilla, Kabar Chimbuchiwa, Tindu, Nawe Miching, Shimbe Jing said, do some dung by name. This got them into a ticket. The, different, the difference really lies in whether or not there's this grasping, this attachment. And we can consider this again by means of the dream example. Like how does our, the presence or absence of um, attachment um, really influence whether like the or grasping to the true uh, true existence. How does that influence whether we have hopes and fears? If we dream while we're asleep, 
then until we wake up, we will do all sorts of things in our dream, right? We work, we, um, we um, act according to whatever appears, and we have hopes and fears and uh, act on the, that basis, and we experience um, pleasant and unpleasant things. That is only the case until we wake up. And when we consider what we have experienced in our dream after we have woken up, then we actually don't have hopes and fears um, with regard to those appearances anymore. We're still thinking about the same things, the things that appeared in the dream, right? The appearance is still there. But when we, um, when, while we are asleep, we think that what what appears in the dream is actually real. So we are attached to the appearance as true. We're grasping to it as true. And because we think this is how things really are, we develop very strong hopes and fears. And once we have woken up, we're still we're still thinking about the dream experiences. But why do we not have strong hopes and fears well, with regard to those things when we are awake? Because we have realized that these were just dream experiences and that they are not real. They're not real at all. They were just dreams. And so when we understa understand that things are not true, not real in the way that they appear, then we don't have strong attachment and aversion um, and you know, strong hopes and fears with regard to those objects. It's as long as we are attached to the object, as long as we grasp to the object, uh, that we will uh, develop the uh, follow-up um, aversion and attachment and hopes and fears. So the whole difference lies in whether or not we have this attachment and that's again what is meant by the, um, what uh, Tilupa is referring to when he says appearances don't bind you attachments is what binds you um <laughs> Shukchambati, the emotional reaction to us, right? Shemba said. Penanganzu, movie to us, Tebaina, Tejuji, Kansor, the science fiction to us, Timo to us, Tabaina. Ta Nga to us, Kaya, Hamiku Genji, Ta, and in Yam Dola, the Timo de Sukinki, director to us, Yam Dola, then in Timo de Tebaina. テモでチパチキャラはなわれキャバチョネヤマレ。ナズニキテモチグランタキオレ。イネヤンゲタあ、ウエギネスイティテモでカレスエインバディゲハコグメバインディカレトンバディレイシチニティワンドショドゥロ
attachment in terms of our emotional reactions, right? When we have very strong attachment to the things to exist in that way, then our emotional reactions will be um, quite different to when we don't have that kind of attachment. Let's consider another example for this. Let's say I'm watching a movie, a new sci-fi movie, and I really have no idea about how that movie is made, and I get totally, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm totally involved when I watch it. And I watch it with someone else, um, for example, the director of that movie. We look at the same movie, we watch the same movie, the appearance of the movie is the same, right? But we will have very different reactions to those appearances. I, who doesn't know how that movie was made, gets totally sucked into the emotional ups and downs of the storyline and the images and so on. While the director knows all the ways that, like all the details of how the movie was made. Uh, he knows all the creation of the special effects and what kind of computer simulations are in there and everything. And you can imagine that his reaction, like his emotional involvement when he watches that movie is very different uh, to my own experience of it, right? Again, it's um, me believing or having actually some level of strong attachment to truth in that movie that um, makes me be more emotionally involved. I get carried away um, by, by the movie, like emotionally, uh, while the director who really doesn't know all those details, um, while he's looking at the same movie, he's watching the same movie, it will be very hard, like it will be very rare for uh, the director to have the same emotional reaction to the movie as I have it. So that's the difference of um, knowing that some, like having some level of uh, attachment to the truth of the appearance, uh, or knowing exactly how it's how it appears, how it was created. เดลังอาจุติมูดาวตะไวเนี่ยพาจุลทงกิยอบายเนี่ยทําเจติเปรเจคเตอร์กิดิสเพลย์ดาวรอบาอันอาจุติกอบสุลดิสุงเกรนา
and the screen which uh, shows the movie or which uh, yeah which the movie is shown on that is appearances without the mind there are um, there are no appearances so it's based on the projector like dependent on the projector things appear on the screen right on the on the yeah screen and so uh, we fall under the power of the impression that things actually appear on the screen uh, independently but really it's due to the power of the mind and under the influence of the mind uh, that um, things appear to us in a certain way and so that's what we need to identify we need to identify uh, the the dependency here and we need to uh, develop the um, independency of the mind recognizing the influence of the conceptual mind to make us grasp to appearances in a particular way that's all that Now a di maka kwache ka maku bache tini uh shimba yang mashu bachini uh jik tini gitini tabla miyore sumare dikana te tuku kore stanga zu kare che kore sana wani katu e midwa tini shimba te katu kore tuku mare sana katu kore sumare kae yore sumare ta kandis che kore slav yong di ตัดเงินสุดที่ตัวสมองมันอะไรสุ่งกันเลยอ่าคือเสียอ่าไม่สมมติรางวัลเสียไปแล้วเนี่ยป่ะสิแต่ที่สิ่งที่อ่าดึ
Gadi ani di suci kali kau yer. Ani de susu nyawatan jani sama tangbai na kecik show di sini. Nawa tongbak kom sudu nawa kagos sudu apa tidi main baca. Nawa tang sembai ni apa di sini. Ia baca. Ani orang suda kagoya tang sama tangkoya di tang. Sabab je kosa di nawa kala main baca ni. Sembai di kala Sama tangtu bayi na, ani, orang tu kebar cuma tu, yang grace ni, ta, tordi na, nawa tang simba ni ti, ya baca ku grace ni, ta tinggi di sini bayi, tering, sungguh tak kerja bala. So, when we talk about meditating on the unity. When we speak about the unity of the two truths, then we start talking about the unity of appearance and emptiness. And since that is a difficult topic, um, as I mentioned that we should apply this to our own experience again. And actually, when we talk about the meditation on the unity of appearance and emptiness, it, we are not supposed to just stop um, appearances. Appearances don't need to be negated. They don't need to be stopped. But we need to identify the difference between appearance and our grasping or attachment to, to those appearances. And when we distinguish correctly between mere appearance and our attachment, then we can meditate accordingly. By not stopping, or med not meditating based on trying to stop appearances, but dealing with that attachment. So, in brief, what this session today was about is to identify the difference between appearance and our attachment or grasping to those appearances, and that we need to uh, avoid that attachment, not negate appearance. <laughs>